time for a brew. New glass cupboard. Mm. Uh, let's have a different glass from the SJ. We'll have the, the Gordon Scotch. Anyway, to change glass themes from the SJ glasses. Nearly worn out. Oh, ooh, creaky chair. <clears throat> I'm all homebrewed out nearly. So I thought <coughs> I would try a little different take. And uh, I'd do a beer for the subscribers of each country. So a German beer if I've got German subscribers. Or Austrian as the Wacky Schnapps brothers are. Get an Austrian one. I have got an Austrian one, but I'm not using that one on this theme. That's a special beer. <coughs> but today it's Ireland, the Porterhouse, Rury's Brain Blaster. In one of those horrible continental pull off crown cap things, which I hate personally because when you get these out of the cases, check the date and you put them back in sometimes this catches and not happened yet but obviously you can break the seal right this is um, let's have a look on their website thrice hopping bringing a complex soft bitterness allied to the malt induced sweetness with a characteristic oily fuggles hop perfume not just for students once stuffed the savour of the flavour of a glass as digestive, true aromatherapy, pale malt, roasted barley, black malt, flake barley, Galena Nugget East Kent Golden, 7% ABV. And the other thing you use out there with these is cutting your freaking finger. Health and safety. Okay, it's a thistle style glass. <sighs> it's not Scottish though, it's Belgian. Although it is very heavy, Scottish heavy ale, that the Belgians brew. But, we'll get that in there. I see. Quite malty actually. Strong hop flavour, hop flavour, hop aroma as well. Actually, the malt base is very similar to a Scottish ale that I had in this very glass, <coughs> which is the Gordon's Scotch Ale. It is quite malty, like those, but um, with an equal dose of hops as well. Yeah, it's quite hoppy, it's a sort of a piney resin there almost. Although they're Galena Nugget East Kent Goldens. <coughs> it's a bitter afterbite. A little bit American esque, really. Hoppy ale. Quite full, very full bodied. <coughs> Those malts, big mouthfeel. Anyway, we don't want us in for a full beer review, do we? It's Hungry Wednesday. So, <coughs> the updates. The wine. The thermometer. You can see that now. That was the next one came today, the thermometer. A new thermometer. Well, that's my current brew thermometer, which has suffered a little bit of wear and tear. Um, melted in the pot. Got burnt by the burner. So, I'm invested in this one. Running them concurrently together. That's 21.7. That one doesn't have a digit, just checking accuracy. 
This one has a temperature set alarm and clock and alarm function. A bit more, a few more things on it. And it also has a braided stainless steel probe. Similar to another one I did have, which I don't use because it's wholly inaccurate. But the probe on that one is exactly the same as this, and the same little 2.5 jack plug. So we've got a backup thermometer. Just checking the accuracy on them. Um, I use that one. Don't use that for brewing, but that is a commercial refrigerator thermometer probe that runs on one of my power packs. So I'm just running them all together. Just to, you know, know when you're brewing, whether we've just got a chuck a degree on or whatever. But that was it. Yeah, it was the uh, the eBay bargain. Which I think was five or six quid from uh, good old eBay Ching Chong. And the wine is now finally starting to. Well, it's pretty much finished fermentation. There's not a lot of airlock activity, but as you can see, we are pretty. going clear. All the yeast and everything's dropped down. All the fruit contents. Looks like cheese. Uh, yes, you should always alarm your humbrew with a deadly Jack Russell. You know me, I always like to have a backup, so now we've got backup yeasts, backup fermenters, backup gas, backup beer, backup thermometers. The other acquisition that was late and arriving last week was yet another book. Mm. Brain Blast is carved as well. <clears throat> as some of you know, I'm quite partial to a, a Belgian. <clears throat> if you saw last week's shelf. So I had this as well. Mm. Brew like a monk. Another good book. <laughs> so, uh, when I've got through the other two, I will be um, digesting this one as well for some hints, tips and useful information and of course absorbing some little nuggets of in knowledge more brewing knowledge I have literally this is the first time I've opened a book since I got it I took it out of the pack put the uh, put it over there ready for this week's Humber Wednesday it's a book got pages and everything it's even got pictures which is a relief oh I bet that's West Flatron Look at that stunning uniform. <clears throat> Might end up wearing something like that at work. No, looks like pajamas. Anyway, not a lot else to report. Hops are pretty much past tense. <clears throat> They're alive, but they have not done very well. <laughs> mainly due to weather, neglect and conditions, a combination of all. Um, the ones outside in the garden are a little bit greener and healthier looking but they are not really, these, the flowers are really just now forming and they are minuscule which is what happened last year compared to the ones where they originally came from um, which the house had none because they all got wiped out during reconstruction of the fencing but um, I've been called back there this week to try and finish a bit off and they've started growing again. Although obviously nothing for this year and yeah, the house will be sold end of this year, next year, so there won't be a crop there. But the but I have been told by my one of my co-workers who owns three acres of land <coughs> that used to be a hop farm. And uh hers are looking good as far as I know. So uh, hopefully we can do a little bit of um, <coughs> acquisitioning of hops from her plantation. But uh, again, I'm not quite sure on the varieties, although I don't know whether the old boy who originally owned the plot is still alive, because if he is, she said she would ask him, because he used to grow the hops for Green King to supply them, I suppose, back in the 
60s when they used to do all their own maltings and everything, when they made proper beers instead of the piss water they do now. But, um, yeah, so all is not a complete loss, so I'd better order some more fact bags, I think, just in case I'm lucky. But I did um, a couple of deliveries ago when we have uh, a large quantity of German beer import. <laughs> And we have to go through all the cases and check the dates and make sure there's no missing, you know, the driver's share, the illegal immigrants that go in the back of the truck share, um, you know, <clears throat> we have to go through them all. Um, and this was thrown inside one of the crates, which is obviously a, a German keg tap that's broken, <clears throat> because the little tap bits there, the spigots, spouty bits there, but... Um, it's an Augustina. So I thought, actually, <coughs> if I knock that out or cut it off, that there has got a hole in it which you could uh, sink a stud or a nut and a thread adapter. And we have ourselves a pump handle. Ah, not quite ready for pumps yet, but I do have a couple of <coughs> taps and I haven't got around to contacting the guy because I just literally haven't had time to go over there and have a chin wag and see if I can sort out some gas because there is a supplier in my area finally which will be good if I can fill my existing bottles but if I've got to pay the five year right of use for his bottles whoever he's doing them through not so good because he's a little bit dearer than some people are for the same size cylinder and it's a 10 year right of use not a 5 which he's doing so I might enlighten him on that <coughs> but whether it but his website is advertising they do on site refilling it's not an you know exchange system where they're obviously going to a plant the cylinders are recharged and then go back on another lorry in you know storage like gas bottles do so, as long as he's not too, you know, health and safety conscious about the certificate on the bottle tap being 1998 and, you know, a little bit out of date, but it's still got gas in it, so it's obviously not leaking. So, we might be able to acquire CO2, which then means we can start taking the corny keg route or the Euro kegs. <coughs> If I can um, acquire some Euro kegs, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Just in case, I have an A type connector. <laughs> right, that's it for me. Good drinking, good luck with everyone else who is still having their SJ Paul beer judging to do or waiting for their beers to be judged. I think I've had about eight scores in for mine at the minute when I last checked, which I think was yesterday. I haven't had a chance to check today. I've done all mine. They're all up and loaded as from, I think, last night. <coughs> no, I missed last night because I was normally film my Humber Wednesdays on Tuesday because it takes me a day to upload. <laughs> which is, well, I, I kept my videos pretty short. I thought I'd done pretty bloody well, you know, keeping most of them at five minutes. <coughs> but I uploaded a couple, I, I uploaded them all and then left them private on my channel and then then a block release of them and I sort of back to back because you can now stack your videos for upload and I done, I mean the average one was probably five and a half, six minutes long I done one upload on its own one night and uh, you get the download time approximation it was 228 minutes upload time for a five and a half minute video <laughs> get off fruit flight right I'm out of here see you next week if the internet will let me <laughs> <laughs>